My YouTube channel has been growing a lot lately, and the more it grows, the weirder and meaner some of the comments get. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I don't love getting the weird comments, and I certainly don't love getting the mean comments. So I was wondering if there was a way to make these comments sound beautiful, would I start to love them? So I invited one of my favorite artists, Vines, to come to my studio today and help me out with this. Vines is an incredible composer and vocalist, and we actually just released a single together today. So you can go check that out if you want to, but I should tell you that the way she sings might not be what you expect. So I've only been doing the vocoder thing for like a few years. I googled Bon Iver vocoder how. I don't know if it was even accurate, but the first thing that came up was like TC Helicon voice live too. It does process my like my voice a little bit right here, but if I add like a D chord, then you get all of those notes there too. I really like how it's half human, half non-human sound. That texture is really fun to play with and it fits in with a lot of the things that I like to write. What else should I say? Can I try oh. it? I want, I want to try <laughs> yeah. it. But I can't sing at all, so I'm just That's like, fine, we've got okay. auto-tune. Okay, yep. I feel better about this now that I heard it. I feel like I could do joke things. Yeah. We should try to read something random. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, can we? <gasps> I'm just reading a mean comment. Dude, your face is covered in Nintendo hipster shit and you are trying too hard to look cool. But your boobs are kinda nice though. I usually keep negative thoughts like this to myself. But when I see something this unfortunate, I looked through the comments and I couldn't possibly outweigh the stench. I don't want to read this actually. What's <laughs> with this annoying hairstyle? You are cute, but I have to agree that you don't need the nose ring or anything else to make yourself attractive. Just don't get tattooed. This one's bad. Should I do should I yeah. do this? Okay. I not to your videos, put the speaker on my balls at full volume. <laughs> I don't think he really does that. I think he's lying. What are we working with here? Mm, okay, so this is my vocal setup. I've got a Korg mini log here, and what is actually doing all the vocal processing is the TC Helicon Voice Live 2. A lot of people think that the harmonizing is coming from the mini log, but I'm actually only taking MIDI out of it. Any note that I'm pressing here, the MIDI gets sent into the harmonizer. It also has like a little bit of auto tune on my dry voice, but like if I play a D chord here, then you get a pretty chord, pretty voice chord. I love how you don't have like too complex of a setup. It's really just this, like you could use any MIDI keyboard as long as it's got like a MIDI out. I've gotten a few comments online that are like, I saw you using the MIDI log as a vocoder, so I bought a MIDI log and I'm just like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm <yeah>. sorry. <laughs> so before today, have you tried pedals on vocoder? I have tried a few pedals, not a lot. Do you want to try an experiment with all different kinds of pedals right now? <laughs>
lot. It's doing stuff like while I'm sustaining, so I can just like hang out on a cord and it'll still be interesting. <laughs> Singing one out there. That's it's unreal. I work with a lot of like repetitive, kind of minimal stuff, and I like really building the textures. But it's super useful if you have a tool that will repeat things but make it a little special each time it repeats. went to college for composition, so I started out writing music for other people. When I got out of college, I was doing some like freelance composition, and then I wrote a 30-minute piece for a saxophone quartet and myself on vocoder. But that's where my album Birthday Party started. Do you think like that your classical upbringing has had an influence on your music? I think in the ways that I think about texture, definitely. I did get a, a little bit of shit, I think, in grad school. I got comments that my music was too nice to listen to, too easy to listen to, and that was cheating. Learning how to be told that something is the right way and then like figuring out on your own that that's not true, even though that kind of moment can be like truly shattering. It was really important for me to go through. There's a lot of stuff that like I didn't know where I was going, but I just followed what I like doing. Yeah. There's a lot of bravery that goes into it to like yeah. be able to just like fuck around and find out. It brings you ultimately to where you want to be. Knowing some things that you don't want to do is sometimes enough. It's not that there are answers and you're not being given them, it's that there are no answers. <laughs> yeah. some stuff on you know streaming services and whatnot the okay. hit clips hit clips do you remember tooth tunes is that what it was that's called not real. that's not real the toothbrushes that play music in your brain you can that's how i don't know vibrates yeah, you in your that? skull i'm trying i'm trying to get there man ambient indie sad sad vibes yep. in your mouth I've gotten a lot of weird comments online, but I have not yet gotten, I want to feel this music in my mouth. You will. I want to...